Okay. Okay, 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 okay. All right, so let's talk about this piece right here. Um, so what's happened is you've tried to draw a face in a really extreme perspective and what's happened is that in trying this you're, what it's done is it reveals all the blind spots in your thinking. So you probably have never experimented with this before, you don't focus enough on rotation, you probably have some form issues and for some reason that in your thinking it didn't occur to you that this entire section here would be lifted up and we would see way more of the bridge. So what happened is instead of seeing the prism like this, so instead of, I mean, of seeing the prism like this instead of like this, right, so this is from, or even, even more compressed, we see less of the prism on the other side. So we don't even see the bridge anymore because we're looking at it, we're rotating it in such a way where we don't see it anymore. So let's see if I've got myself a prism in here. Mm. Don't think so. All right, but if you don't know what this program is, it's Portrait Studio. So what's happened is you've painted the nose to look like that, with slightly showing the lower piece when instead the nose should have looked like this. You should have completely lifted it up and, and completely turned it away. So this happens when we don't study enough forms, when we don't think about everything in its native geometry. So this character, oh, whoopsie, sorry, I'm just fucking looking at his balls. <laughs> it's like ball shot. Um, so what happened is you drew the nose in this direction with the face in this direction. So instead of that, let me just tilt the neck back. All right. So lean, no, uh, okay, so his head is tilted that way, and the camera is also tilting him this way, and the light is coming from top down, just like that, so we've got a shadow, and that's exactly what you drew, so what happened is, let me just make the nose upturn just a little bit, so we can see. I have an old version of the new version. Well, it's my fault, really. Um, but right now I'm just turning up the nose just like that. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to show you that the way you turned up the nose is that you did this just so that you could represent it to be seen from the bottom. And really what it was is that it was a complete compression of, you know, we need to see more of the lower half, the lower part of the nose. And we need to completely get rid of the bridge. The bridge needs to be hidden completely. So if we look at this guy from the side now, this is typically what we're looking at. That this nose is still not completely upturned in the way you drew it. The upturned looked a little bit more like that you were forcing the visibility of the lower piece without doing much about compressing the geometry in its rotation. So what, what, what do we see? We see a distancing from the lip. The lip is a little bit less close and we see it closer to the eyes. So in your version, all we need to do is instead of seeing the nostrils like with their circular version, we need to see the nostrils with their vertical version because we're looking at the lower part of the nose. <clears throat> so this is what I'm doing here. And as for the bridge, remember the cylinder, when I tilted the cylinder away, the bridge shouldn't have any indentation in it. It should pretty much be a consistent value all around, just like that. I mean, you can introduce a little bit of those. As for the eyes, I think the eyes just proportion-wise a little too close to each other. Okay. So last night I was streaming and um, I came upon a comment on my channel. Someone had written a complaint about how I referred to Final Fantasy and how I questioned whether whether or not it was a game for homosexuals. I, I preceded that question by saying this is the stupidest game I've ever made I mean I've, I've ever seen 
Um, and this person mistook my comment by, by thinking it was a homophobic by creating a parallel between the game being the stupidest game I've ever, I've ever seen and questioning whether or not it was for homosexuals. So it was separating the ideas completely. One, one, one was a question, one was me just casually, colloquially, you know, stumbling my way in and just saying that this is the stupidest game I've ever seen because it, fo it focuses too much on sexuality and it just became like a, a cheap narrative to just show off some softcore porno. That's why it was a stupid game. That's why it's the stupidest game I've ever seen. I've also never witnessed, like, outright shameless, like, fanboy servicing or servicing, fan servicing for the homosexual demographic. So that's why I was asking, hey, is this a game for homosexuals? This person just completely misconstrued it and, and, and accused me of homophobia, and that is the, that is the worst thing ever. Like, I hate being accused of something like that. It's, I take such precautions when I'm teaching that I don't even mention like my belief in God because in case there's an atheist in the audience who might feel alienated or um, uh, and and uh, left out because oh there's like a God lover here crediting all the beautiful symmetry of the human face to you know some other deity and here I am not believing in it I feel left out like I, I, I don't I take that level even to the level of censoring my own beliefs for the sake of this person's comfort in my channel I may be frank I may be a frank person and I have a temper and you know, I teach this frank way that you guys have told me you love, but I never, I've, I've never allowed that frankness to turn into rudeness or prejudice or, or phobias of any kind. So this is, this is me telling you guys that if there is, if there are those, like, you know, the people walking around waiting to be offended, these, like, heroes, um, you know, chill, chill out because you're not going to find a case here. And I want to say one more thing. Um, the homosexual community is no longer in any kind of plight. All right. There may be minor instances, really, really delicate instances that are very, very specific to their context, context worldwide. But as for homosexuals not being allowed to vote, not being allowed to own land, not being allowed to get married, all that is behind us because of the courage and the strength of their forebears, people who fought really hard to make sure that the scary future, the possible future for the homosexual community is never comes to fruition. So they fought hard. So you guys literally, you gender war people, every one of you, I don't know who, who whatever, you're, whatever you call yourselves, it's really hard to find a label nowadays. Those who fight for the LGBT community, especially the youth, and those who fight for the gender equality and whatnot and gender definition, feminists, uh, nearly all your fights are done in the West. You guys are done. All right, you guys are finished. You should be happy that there's nothing left to fight about. Don't go around trying to be the heroes looking for glory so you can fight for your people because all the glory was used up. It was used up. There's no more glory to be shared. So don't go around looking for ways to, to be offended because you really want to, 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 to fight for your people. I appreciate that. You, want, you guys want to fight for what's yours and you want to represent yourselves through your fight. But there's literally no more fight left. So let's talk about Middle East. There's a fight there. There's a fe feminists need to focus their attention over there. These feminists that, 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 that think there are problems over here. You guys need to go focus over there. Focus in the Middle East. You'll still find the archaic, medieval, um, 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 just, just, just outright, like, like disgusting prejudices over there still. Because religion is still such, plays such an embedded part in, in government and society. So your fight in the West is actually quite finished. You have tiny little issues that all you have to do is call a policeman and he'll come help you out. All right, over there, if you call a policeman, he's not going to give a shit about you. He's going to beat you up for being a woman. He's going to beat you up for being a homosexual. So take it easy. Take it easy. You're not going to... And this person goes on to, like, threaten my channel with, like, this, this, this Twitter following. And, and I just... I was red in the face. My ears were on fire. And I was really pissed off. And I was going to upload my rant in its raw form. But I, I decided not to because I don't want my channel to be about that. But I also don't want to stay quiet. But I also don't want to put this person on the spot. So I'm not going to share their name and not, not going to share the comment. I've deleted my screenshot of the comment. I've deleted everything. Um, because I don't want this person to feel attacked because the last thing the LG LGBT community needs is, is demonize, to be demonized. They don't need these youth running around looking for problems and then the adults have to clean up after them. They're starting to look like social justice warriors. These people just want to be left alone so they can go to their daily routines and not be, not be shot down. And so I want to tell you youth, the LGBT youth today, to stop looking for fights because your forebears, the people, the earlier generations of the homosexual community are done fighting and they won their fight. I'm not telling you to stand down if you see someone being attacked. Of course not. I'm not asking you to be passive. I'm also not asking you to look for fights where you, where you won't fight. Stop looking for fights. 
because this is ridiculous. It's become an infe infection in our society. Everyone has to walk around with, with the nerve padding to avoid of offending anyone. Stop pretending that you are being that you're being oppressed because you have no idea what the word oppressed means. Oppression is being uh, executed by ISIS and, and have your have your mul uh, just mutilated body on television after they record it and show it as a warning to the to the to the people of the town they've invaded to, on the internet that's oppression being being executed because you're a homosexual being executed because you're a, a, a non sunni because because you're um a christian that's called oppression so wake up get out of your little worlds okay these little worlds that you live in get out of them and i don't i don't i don't i'm not asking you guys to go watch execution videos but i am asking you to get yourselves informed there is no fight left in the west what there is is that we need to start you know i'm, I'm not even going to go there it's definitely not the fight for, for equality because equality has pre, pretty much been achieved that's why we're called the united states of america and canada and the west and, and first world countries so chill the fuck out, stop looking for fights, or else or else you'll see a darker side of me the next time I'm ranting. And it was a dark side that I showed yesterday, and I never want to show it again. You'll bring out the worst in people. You demonize people with, with tossing around these terms. I'm not sure you guys are very familiar with what it means to be a homophobic person. I'm not sure you guys even understand what racism is and what, what, what it has rationalized for people, what it has allowed people to do, from lynching to executions to what we see today and in our age in your lifetime. So trust me, there are fights. There are fights left for you to fight, but they're not in the West. So go make a difference somewhere else instead of, look, looking, instead of looking for fights where you won't find them. You'll just make yourself look like an idiot. <clears throat> like a young Padawan looking for a way to train. Alright, so what I did now is I moved down the chin just a little bit because it moves up with the tilts of the head. I'm not going to look at the comments because I don't want to continue the discussion, but I appreciate all your support and thank you for your comments. I'm going to show a little bit less of the forehead, but the forehead, because it tilted, the bulbous shape of the forehead also started to show just a little bit. So yeah, we see less of the top of the head because it's the distant triangle or the distant circle of that, of that cylinder that I tilted for you early on. <clears throat> but the, the, the head, the forehead doesn't just, um, like from the side, it has a bit of a Oopsie. This guy's tilted. See this little bulbous piece? When we when we tilt the head, we start seeing more of that piece. Just like that. See that? It's a little bump. It wouldn't have been visible if we did this, and it's not visible here, but it is visible the more we tilt up. So just take a look at how it starts to surface on the horizon, just like that. It starts to show this little bump right here. Alright? So this, when you have issues like this, the ears are also a little bit too low, considering, that, I mean, this is an extreme extreme angle here, but you're probably drawing something like that. The ears are just a little bit low. They're a little too close to the jawline. Just look at that. Look at your version. And look at this really, really basic universal head. I mean, he's not very like a significantly beautiful or significantly proportioned. He has a little bit of a, of a couple of flaws, but he's not, he's definitely not perfect. The model, I mean. But just, just looking at it as a universal way to look um, at the skeletal structure instead of seeing a particular face. So the ears were way too big, I think way too outturned and way too low. <clears throat> yeah, essentially what I wanted to say is that I'm, I, I did not intend for that to even, it was nowhere near, it wasn't even a joke. It wasn't even a joke like, is this a game for homosexuals? That's not even how I asked it. I literally just asked, is this a game for homosexuals? Because I've never, I've, I, I want to know that it was, I'm not buying a game whose demographic is for either the metrosexual or homosexual um, demographic. I was just looking for an equivalent of Kingdom Hearts because I had Kingdom Hearts fever. It was the holidays and I really wanted to just play something that reminded me of Kingdom Hearts so badly. And I, I grew up with Kingdom Hearts. So I, I heard that the gameplay is a little closer to Kingdom Hearts and the, the quests were pretty good, but I couldn't get past that costume and that overly sexualized, retarded character and, um, and, and what they did in the beginning, which is like, you know, when you try to please to all the sexual orientations, you pretty much alienate one of them. And they, I felt alienated because of the constant attempts to turn me on. I'm just like, I just want to play a game. So now I'm just like fo focusing my heat not on any one particular group of people. I'm just focusing my heat on Square Enix. Like they need to get their shit together because if se over sexualizing a game is the only way to, to, to boost their fan base or to ga gain a more faithful fan base or to, I don't know what it is. Is it rewarding their fan base? I'm not really sure. I mean, this character is relatively new, right? The Cindy character. 
So it's just, I'm just so pissed at what games have turned into today. And then right before that, we finished Uncharted 4, which was wonderful. I mean, the girl isn't at all overly sexualized. She actually sweats. She actually has sweat stains. And she actually looks like she's traveling through the jungle. She can shoot. She's not helpless. She doesn't need to be saved. So I guess it's like, um, it's improving as we go. Like the, the way they've characterized women and represented women. I'm not some sort of feminist, but... Um, I'm like the traditional definition of a feminist because of the way I fought definition for my culture and the way I've been represented. But just just as a a consumer, I felt so alienated by the over sexualized and excess sex sexuality in these games. It was just it was unnecessary, and I have to think about it as the Jap youth, male, fifteen year old, probably is the main demographic, and then you've got you know all, every everybody else that they're trying to please as well. That was a lot of polys they spent on Cindy. And that's that that's why I'm just gonna go like burn that game. I'm gonna go put that game in a bonfire and then I'm just gonna tweet it. <laughs> Alright, because of all the trouble it's caused. But I did re upload my video. I did clip out that part. I don't wanna offend anybody. Again, I don't want to ever cause any any kind of alienation to someone or hurt anybody. But I also don't wanna be I I wanna stay quiet. This is why I've discussed it today. It angered me, so I deserve to express it. And um yeah, I, I just hope that uh, you guys understand that I'm on your side and I'm not trying to alienate any group of people. I'm just walking on eggshells all the time when I describe the differences between the male and female gender and I can't even count it count it how many times like people have, have come at me because, oh, I've defined the female as this kind of body type and male as this kind of body type. Like, I've been punished time and again and I just it's like, you know, there's no more room for distinction nowadays. These, these youth are, I'm just going on, aren't I? These youth are too loud, we have to be louder. I'm done. Alright, so let's take a look at the before and after. I know I said I'm done, but I promise this time I'm done. <laughs> I don't want the class to be about that, and I don't want my channel to be about that either. So before, after. So what happened is, because you rotated it, you rotated it in a flat way, as if you unwrapped the character, and then you just laid them out. It felt like an unwrapped character, do you know what I mean? There was no real underwiring. There was no underwiring. Like, you, you, you peeled his face, and then you just, you know, like, <laughs> that sounds so creepy. But, like, you peeled his face, and then you laid it on a table. But now we kind of just wrapped it back around the mannequin, and uh, and then, you know, re-wrapped this texture. So when we do that in, in 3D modeling, we unwrap, paint over, and then re-wrap it. I think that's the basics. I'm not a 3D modeler by any definition of the word. <clears throat> Thank you, Rosalinda. I feel better, definitely. I feel better. Thank you. All right. So, before, after. All right. As for this little line, I'm not sure what reference you used. It was probably did have this line, but I would just recommend getting rid of it. Also, men's noses really shouldn't be stuck right in between the two eye lines. Make them a little bit thicker. You'll uh, you'll bring in more masculinity. And um It'll feel just a little bit less, uh, less tiny and beautiful, and yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say the Final Fantasy face, but I'm just gonna trigger myself again. Okay, and then I'm just gonna have a little bit of extra. What's it called? Right over here. All right. A lot of people told me that I shouldn't delete it and re-upload it. I think should have, I should not have given in or whatnot. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to stir trouble. I also think I shouldn't have deleted it. It was my video, and it. I. I, I even said after that moment that I, I'm not trying to be homophobic. This is a real question. Um, but clearly, there's that there, you have to have some level of um, caution, I guess. Now that the age. Is an age of, of uh, I don't know what to call it. I'm afraid of using certain words right now. It's an age of pussies. Let's just say that. <laughs> All right, before, after, before, after. So remember the if you, the eyes as well feel like they've been unwrapped. They don't feel like they're part of this recessed inner socket. It feels like the eye corner, the nose bridge, and the other eye corner are all in the same line. It doesn't matter if you added two little shadows. It's not about. It's not just about shading. It's about constructing the form. It's about sculpting. <clears throat> it 
Yeah. The ears look like a ceramic piece. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that. Ceramic, like a handle? Age of PC. <laughs> PC Master Race. My brother just got himself a big old Mac, and I'm just there laughing at him. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you get doing getting a Mac? Why? 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 It's so expensive for no reason at the same performance or less than an ob than a, than a, than a computer of equivalent value or or, or less. I have a PC. It's just or more. I don't know where my sentence was going. So I hope that shows you what um, what you need to work on. You need to work on rotation. I think you're trying to paint a zombie child right now, but you're also trying to use her face. This is a child's face, so you're more leaning towards his proportions than hers. I'm not sure what you're using her for. Um, at this point, she's a completely different age and gender from the boy, so this referencing is going to just throw you off. So I recommend you choose one. Either she has his dark circles, but you're using this as a template. When you use referencing, there's always one reference that you stick to the most. Write that back to me. There's always one reference that is your the lifeblood of your painting. There's always one of those references that you chose. You can choose a hundred of them, but there's always one that's going to be the skeleton. There's always one reference that's the skeleton. You haven't chosen which one that is. Feels like you chose it this one, but I'm just saying that you know it could have been this character. She has more bone structure and a little bit more intrigue to her face um, than this character here, who has way less way 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 less structure going on except for the dark circles. Um, but if you were going, if the commission was for a younger, or the project was for a younger character, younger zombie, you can go for that. Um, the tooth gap is actually causing a lot of trouble for the beauty, which is a good thing if you were going for a zombie. But, what is this? This says day one. Why are you going for a zombie for day one of your 14 day challenge? What happened? This is wrong. Um... Uh, uh, so, so please, please decide what you're doing with this 14-day challenge. Is this just a simple study? Don't try to get in on the 14-day challenge and cover as many days as possible by painting random stuff. The 14-day challenge is a very strict challenge. is a form of study where you draw the same face and, and vary it according to how you correct the, the along the critiques that you receive. You have to receive a critique. Uh, the 14-day challenge isn't a way to perfect your painting of zombies. It's to perfect the general understanding of skeletal structure, native geometry, and blending, and edge work, and, and detail, and contrast. And um, It's a way to perfect the way you draw a portrait indefinitely. All right? But that's my little thought on that. I'm going to look at this one. <clears throat> real quick because I wanted to talk about edge work I think there was also another piece that needed um, some edge work talk <clears throat> All right, this girl is much smaller than this one <laughs> alright there you go Let's merge that down so what you've done here is um, there's pretty much too much, there's, there's, there's a lot of exposure in your painting, meaning like a, it's like a too bright. But it's also bright in the right spaces, so it looks like the camera was just, like the photo was just shot like that. Darken. I'm just going to lower down that value so that when we do build up the highlights, they make a little bit more sense. Also, this is fashion photography. This is useless for your work. Fashion photography is extremely, extremely um, sterile with their lighting. They try to show as much of the face as possible. There's no drama. There's no form. There's a lot of the form is, is diluted and um, diffused because they don't want long core shadows hiding the girl's face if she's showing off the next watch or something like that. So these people are hired to, these photographers are hired to promote as much as possible this thing. And if you have shadows covering the detail, of course, then you don't have a thing anymore. So what you need to do is lower this contrast and um, bring in the, the, the edge work. And I don't have time to cover all of this, but you see how you inverted? You tried to outline with the nose. What you were supposed to do, actually, is do the opposite. The nose is the actual dark bit and the cheek is the the light bit of the nose. 
this is a very very difficult photograph to copy because it doesn't have any real core shadows. It's very soft and it feels like a lot of the details have been diffused and deleted all a lot. A lot of the edge work, most of the edge work is like, let me just show you real quick. Most of the edge work is in the eyes. So if you delete that and that, we really don't have a lot of contrast or detail down here. Really, really large brush strokes could be could be used. A couple of edge work, of course, because it's the nose. But the eyes are real. The realest clusters and the eyes and the realest contrast is in the eyes. And the eyes have the most contrast compared to the rest of the dark spots. So you really have to um, go back in and reassess how much you're working on this and. Um, the nose feels like, or the lips feel like they have a lot more edge work than the eyes do. Okay, so there's the cast shadow there, but it's only slight. And if you really want to see where these cast shadows used to be before they were excessively diffused, um, just zoom all the way out. You'll be able to catch them. But I don't have time to repaint over all of this because I already chose another piece to, to repaint over to speak about edge work a little bit and um, discuss what you do with your with your blocky brush. I've never really discussed it, like what you do exactly with your block blocking brush. <clears throat> okay, and then there's more edge work back here. So your reference is a little bit faulty and you're, it's not really promoting you f for blocking in. You're using edge work where it doesn't belong, like the edges of the lips are completely diffused. You need to show more edge work around the nose and um, you need to see more of, these, more of the contrast around the eyes. But this general photograph is a really bad choice because it's not revealing where the bone structure is on the side. Any real cast shadows on the eyeballs and the, and the, the socket of the eyebrow and the rest of the eye. Uh, the nose is almost like it's really blurry, so I recommend another kind of photo. I should probably make like a whole set of pho photographs, like we just find on the internet, and then just share them with you guys. That way, they're like Instarac approved <laughs> images for reference. But let's talk about this one. All right, so your version looks really fuzzy and blurry, and this is because you're using a really, really careful brush. And what you need to do is you need to get this hard brush on 100% and do this. All right, you need to do this. You need to do that too. And a little bit of that. Okay, and then some of that. What I'm doing right now, what's it called? Can anybody tell me what it's called? What do these look like? anyone tell me you shouldn't use the mixer brush because it still brings in paint it, the, what's better than the mixing brush is getting a scatter brush on the on the uh, smudge tool that's the best way to mix in colors that you've laid in the mixer brush brings its own colors and it still brings colors in from the um, from the color picker so you need something that doesn't do that smudge brush smudge brush doesn't do that a lot of you think smudge brush drags it doesn't drag it actually, um, if you choose a scatter brush, it'll actually just distribute really, really nicely, very, very close to how it does in the real world. Uh, edging, edge work, defining edges, edge defining, <laughs> highlights, no, blocking in, very good, carcatink, very good, I'm blocking in. So these blocks are remnants of the geometry of the lowest poly that this face used to be in in its early stages before it was painted. So assume that every painting is like the final stage, has a final stage to it. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm blocking in along these surface areas. Just this alone will boost the detail. And then I know, yeah, it looks messy. Yeah, it looks scary messy, especially after you spent four hours with a soft brush trying to paint this. The last thing you want to do is just go in and paint with a big old brush but that's the one thing that you didn't do, that you have to do. And so there's two kinds of edges. There are two kinds of edges I've showed you before. There is the edge of one object in front of another. This object and this object are paces apart. They don't mix at all, so this value will never mix with this value ever. 
So that's why we have an edge. Another example of an edge is when we have a fold. It's a very extreme fold. So it's like almost a 90 degree angle. This face looks different from this face. Looks a different direction. Can also be the edge of a cube. Same thing, a folded paper. This face looks different in a different direction than this one. So I'm trying to find these the, these instances here of this kind of edge. So one of the one of the instances is the face on the hair. The face is the head of the hair in certain areas. We have this like super sharp lasso edge in the in the in the in the image, in the reference image. I'm just wondering why that wasn't there. So that has to be there. Let me just increase the resolution. Don't don't be worried that someone might steal your art if you upload it to the community. No one's going to steal your art. Please make sure you upload with a decent resolution. Don't upload screenshots. Upload the actual file. Trust me, nobody's going to steal anything. Everyone's too worried about the next critique they're going to get scared shitless. They're like, oh my god, I just uploaded this. What's going to happen? I can feel the anxiety. I can feel it. <laughs> well, how do you post stuff? It's just that there's no comment on it. You guys get so scared and frustrated. It's like, shit, this hasn't had a comment in it yet. Alright, so I'm just making these edges happen. Using a bit of a darker value here. She does have a hooded eye, so it's a little bit more of a steep edge right around in there. This has too much edge work in it now compared to the rest of the face, so I have to catch up the rest of the face with it. And so the edge work of the eyes. I'm not using anything less than 100% opacity, and I haven't destroyed the piece. How did that happen? That's because we're blocking in along the surface areas. Your values are great. You chose great values, but you spent too much time on them. You were done with them after a while, and then you just kept blending, and you got this really fuzzy look over everything. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get the soft brush, do that little trick I do with the eyelids, paint the first brush stroke, second, third, and then just erase. So we can get that line as a result. It's not really a line. It's like this gradual representation of the fold. Remember that fold example of an edge of the eye socket. So the process to get it was a radial shading technique. And then we just blend away. But you absolutely, absolutely need this this uh, this kind of brush in your in your brush set. If you don't have a blocking brush, please look for one. <clears throat> it's a tense place, the waiting zone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just like feel it. You just feel it. I don't know what it is. You just feel it. So this girl's eyes are a little bit more intimidating. This girl's expression is very soft, while this one is just like, I'm pretty and I know it. So I'm just going to give her that squint, that confident squint. This girl's shoulders are also too close. This girl's shoulders are, her neck is very long and outside. So what do we do with the leftovers of these brush strokes? So just blend them away. We don't blend away the edge areas though, so right here I'm blending away. I'm not going to just do that, because that's the opposite of what we've been trying to do this whole time. I'm trying to keep that edge that was left behind by that blocking brush. This is called blocking in. Alright, I want to teach you the terms because one day you're going to get a critique and someone's going to say blocking in and you're going to think it's like thinking about a cube and finding the cube. Blocking in is definitely related to the cube, but it's not just about drawing a cube on your image. It's about finding where these planes used to be, the native geometry that's left behind, and using them as a way to locate some detail and, and, and resolution. So when we're losing these, the distinction between these planes, we're losing resolution, our picture looks fuzzier. Okay, so just along here, see that sharp edge? Her nose starts to tilt back downward. Just along there. Just from this level, if I do a before and after, this will look so much more, have so much more resolution to it. Need to clean that edge up. And then this, of course, is a radially built area. 
So when you do paint with soft brush, you will eventually realize, okay, I can paint with soft brush now. I've done blocking in for so long that even if I use soft brush, the, the, the planes won't elude me. I'll still be able to see where all these edges are. It's just along here, the rest of the hood is kind of just tilting back. Then we've got the eyeballs. Then the lashes, of course. Okay, and then some more edge work to separate some blocking in the plane of the eyelid area from the rest of the eye. It's okay if I'm slightly lighter than I should be. I can always defuse it. What I'm looking for here is the edge. So that's way lighter than it should be, but it's okay. I'll just use my, my, my soft brush, just take that down radially. <clears throat> okay, do I have like a... What the fuck is happening? Alright, there we go. So I just take that back down to like a neutral value. As for the lips, again, you don't have much not much being built here. Before I get into the lips, let me just show you real quick with the nose. The nose is an example of one object in front of the other. There's space in between them. The nostril does not share the same plane as the cheek. So I'm dragging the color of the nostril all the way over. I mean, fuck, the color of the cheek all the way over to the nostril's edge. See how much you had fuzzing about over there? You had a lot of just halo of shadow around everything, and that's why it looked fuzzy. So now just look at that. We've just got this actual plane now. Separate. Even if you don't see it in your photo with that level. Again, fashion photography is just it's not good for referencing. I mean, this one here actually just allowed some shadows to be visible, but just what they do afterwards, the kind of editing that they do. Right, same thing over here, we need more detail here, so we manage that edge right here. And then the eyes especially are the ones that need the most work. If you bring contrast anywhere, you bring it, bring it towards the eyes. The edge of the iris needs more detail. There was also a slight little hint of a water line. I can't copy that. Exactly, but just along here. And again, same trick, new layer, radial, radially build this shadow area here for the eye socket crease, and then erase with array with, with a blocking brush. If your blocking brush has round edges, it's not a blocking brush. Write that back to me. Right, so if you think you just have something that's generally shaped like a stick or, I don't know, like some sort of weird little brush, it's, 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 if it doesn't have like a blocky shape to it, if it's too curved at the edges, if it doesn't leave behind a, a rectangle, it's not a blocking brush. The reason why we want a rectangle is because it doesn't let you blend, right? And in that, not allowing you to blend has forced you to start thinking about things as a plane instead of a, a gradient. And that's why a lot of you paint stuff that looks really, really unrealistic because it looks too much like a gradient. Like a blob, just like a just like a blob monster. I should probably do a, a video on how to make your own brushes. Talk about what brushes, like what kind of settings you need all the time, what what just essential shapes. All brushes should essentially be blendable. Um or else what's the point of using a, a tablet, you know, if you're going to use these weird little brushes from MS Paint. By the way, if John comes in and asks what program, just say MS Paint, always. Alright. Let me go into liquify real quick. Whoops. Filter, liquify. He's starting to change Marco a little bit too. Marco's been asking me as well. 
Haven't you, Marco? <clears throat> yes, please do that. Okay. I'll think about it. <laughs> After I tease you, I say I'll think about it. Um, the eyebrows a little higher. Like the general likeness of the eyebrows is a little bit more straight. Just like a full straight brow. She kind of looks like that actress from Memoirs of a Geisha. And I'm just blending over here. Make sure the strength is low for that. I don't know why it's at 100 for the love of God. <clears throat> yeah. No on Sketchbook, no, I've, I've never used that. Is that a Mac program? Is that what that is? Okay, and as for the lips, I mean, there's every single edge you have here. There's so much work to do. Every single edge is too soft. Every single one. You really have to work on your edge work. Every single one of these edges is just way, way too soft, homie. Alright, so I'm just going to blend that away. Lasso does leave behind this very dirty look. And this, this edge work issue is a combination of lack of contrast and a lack of a hard edge. So it's both. Remember, there's three ways to detail. What are the three ways to detail? Can anyone list them out? Does anyone remember them? The nose bridge seems a bit too, to be too high. I'm not, I'm not mostly focused on their version. I mean, this is a girl's face, and, and, and it's right. It doesn't have to look exactly like her. I'm not so worried about likeness as I am about form. So what are the three ways to... Um, to detail. Three main ways. Okay, so the rest of the face kind of just merges in. There's a real edge right along here. Again, it's just fine that the face doesn't look exactly like the reference. It's not the point. That's not why we're here. We're here so that we learn how, when we transfer this over to our version, we're not worried about likeness. We're not worried about getting her exact identification. We are worried about getting the form. So when, when there is no face, what's left behind? It's just form. When we don't see a face. Let's say we've never seen a face before and we look at this for the first time. We have no idea what it is. A landscape? What is that? That's what I want you to start seeing. See, see not the face, but the building. Edges, contrast, texture, contrast, edge works, contrast, edge work, and teeny brushes. Good job, Caterpillar. Yes. So what you did was you skipped contrast and you skipped edge work, and you don't really have opportunity for a small brush. So you just we just had a fuzzy image. You just had an image that was that was in Gaussian blur. Some more edge work here, so I have to bring in contrast as well as use a blocking brush. This is how you use one, that's it. Even late game, even in your, if you're just at the very final bits of finishing and you realize, holy god, this whole time I have had zero contrast, zero edge work, I need to go back and just fix some of this, zoom back out and get my blocking brush and just pretend I just started the painting. If you're even that late, it's still useful. Right, so I talk a lot about soft brush and I talk about the exceptions of soft brush and how to avoid soft brush and when to use it, use it for skin, for textures, but I definitely don't recommend soft brush in the early 30 minutes of the painting. When have I ever recommended that? So it's vital, it's absolutely vital that you guys remember. I have to keep zooming out and then do some back in. everything for the cause. All right, and then we have that little kind of area where the Cupid's bow wells up. Just have a little line. So now I can start bringing in those teeny weeny little lines. But even then I'm just so cautious. I make sure they're not too much. I'm not depending on them, but I did consider my edge work and contrast first as a, as a way to detail. All right.
right, so I this shadow here of her of her chin is very very soft. So this I can overblend, but not before blocking it in, then blending it out. And then the lips, using a radial shading technique, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this black actually. I'm just going to slowly descend into the edges of the lips. And then using a lasso, you can also use your brush to create that recessed like cavity of the mouth. And then just outside of that is where I bring in the, the half shadow of the cylinder of the of the mouth. It's all wrong, that's okay. I can edit it. Right, so she has like a little, just like a half moon. Sometimes I really do want to like say, oh wow, like in my religion there's like a way to say um, something. I mean, I don't call myself a religious person and I don't label myself as a Muslim, but sometimes we say like things like subhanAllah, which means, you know, praises be to God for making such a beautiful creature. Or sometimes we look at the sky and we see these amazing colors and it's like saying hallelujah. It's like hallelujah. But even then, like I, I try to censor myself in that way and not, um, not do that because probably there's someone in the audience who might feel alienated or just annoyed at the mention of God. But they don't say anything because they're polite. And then you've got people who find offense in the most random ways and then say something and and then that's when I get pissed off. <laughs> that's when I'm like, you are you have a lot of time on your hands, man. And as as Ethan from H three H three says, as Marco has, has reminded me there's no hobby in being offended. It's being offended is not a hobby. You can't really say. I mean, it's not something you write on your portfolio, is it? Going around looking for trouble, acting like some sort of vigilante for your people. Trust me, if you wanted fights, you would not want to be in them. If you really found the real fight, if you're actually looking down the barrel of a gun, and that's that the other side of that gun was someone who really was a like someone with a phobia. You would come back to this world and you'd say, just, just hallelujah for living here. Because this is the truly the land of the free. But, alas, people have all kinds of privileges over here. They don't realize that they're only here because of a battle once won that they should be thankful they were never part of. Okay, and I'm just bringing in more shadow. I just think that kind of thinking needs to be eradicated completely like within the next within the next 5 2 to 5 years we need to stop this 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 kind of thinking I think, you know people walking around afraid that they'll offend someone trust me you wouldn't be able to really offend someone if you wanted to like if you think you're racist let's say you feel, let's say one of you guys is a secret racist all right and you really wanted to offend someone you don't have that you've never been groomed to have the balls to actually do something about it like it's very unlikely that you'll find someone who who is a racist, who is a you know an asshole, who will do something about it. They're almost always like pocket racists, you know, just closet racists. They're just hiding their opinion in their pocket. They they don't show it. You can see it by their by their personality, but trust me, if they if if they had the slightest little bit of courage and they actually did it's not courage, it's like audacity, let's say, or the balls or the gall to 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 say something about it, then you'd have a fight on your hands. Don't go looking for one in the folds of someone's, you know, clumsy talk and and and, and art critique channel that has forty k subscribers. I'm very I'm very thankful for you guys, but it's a small amount compared to everyone else. There's there's way way better sources for you to get offended in. Right. So one more little edge just around the lip, and then I'm going to unify that cast shadow with the rest of the face. 
But do you see how we're bringing in, it's a lot of work. This is the detailing stage, but you should have pretty much considered all of these details and all of this contrast. By detail, I mean edge work and contrast. You should have, um, you know, taken care of that in the early stages of the painting and then blended away as you added the soft brush, but not blending away the native geometry. Do you understand what I mean? A lot of the blocks, you're not going to end up blending. So this is an example that I made for one of my students in private tutoring. And, um, come on, open up. And let me just get that out of the way. Okay, um, so right here. So I took a picture of one of the low poly models in, uh, in Portrait Studio. And I blended what you're allowed to blend. But look at all the areas I didn't blend. I didn't blend the neck and the jaw. I didn't bl blend the background and the cheek, which you did. I didn't blend the nose and the cheek behind it. I didn't blend anywhere near the lips, especially it's only in those areas where we have flesh, the seams. I didn't blend any, any area around the nose where we have cast shadows and edges. I blended very wide gradients here along the cheek and the fat, short, tiny little quick gradients around the eyes and the eyebrows. I did not make this value the same as this value, which is the same as this. I did not do that. These, these still, you know, if you squint your eyes, you still see a difference between here, here, and here. So you don't end up blending all the areas that you block in. You actually end up keeping a lot of the original brush strokes that you make. So that's why I'm saying you gotta block in. You just can't skip that stage. It's just not an option. All right. So before I, let me just image size. 2000 and then all right so before fuzzy low contrast you know you've you've painted in every little light on the eye what happened to the rest of the detail so you definitely did skip the detail and this is how you raise the contrast okay this is how you work from an image to raise the, raise the contrast yeah she has some hair on her face don't let that distract you don't focus on that focus only on the form Okay. <clears throat> I feel like a lot of immigrants turn racist when they come to a free country. Um, I think it's just like a combination of their fear and then the, the, the myths they've heard about. Uh, my mom was telling me about this, <laughs> this lady that, you know, they were invited to the United States, you know, as refugees, right? They got in a couple months ago. They were Syrian refugees. They heard about Trump getting elected. So it was like three months ago. I don't know how long it was two months ago, um, and the lady was so scared of what she heard about Trump and what he was going to do to immigrants, which she's never going to go through with it, come on, give me a break, it was gonna, he's not going to go around shooting people, this lady got really scared, she illegally snuck into Canada and then they discovered her, <laughs> and then she, anyone can say, you know, she was a racist because she ran away from Americans, because she hates Americans. She, she didn't like seeing Americans, right? That, that's a racism, racism in a form. Um, but she was scared, right? She was, a, she was a little bit afraid because of the legend of, of the United States, the legend that's been built here. And then there's that kind of racist, you know, there's that kind of built by fear, and then there's the ones that really are outspoken, which we don't see anymore. So even the actual racist that we see is like a tiny little, like, like jelly spined racist. I mean, I'm telling you, you're not going to find like a like a true red blooded evil kind of like antagonist type of racist anymore. You see that in the Middle East. You see that in the Middle Ages. It's like a perfect example of the Middle. East. As long as they're just still trafficking women in so-called marriages, as long as they're executing women for 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 for, for, for so-called witchcraft, they actually are. Um, you will still see, you know, this kind of oppression and the gay then and the and the and the black and whatever they will all be treated just really bad and no there is no animal rights there are no animal rights in the Middle East let's go to the Middle East together and I'll show you guys dogs are just littered across the street a dead dog a dead cat nobody gives a shit all right so before after and um H3, H3, actually, I just love his work sometimes because he really does talk about this, how, how people want to be, how people want to feed off this excess sensitivity. So there was this one guy, I'm sure you guys have heard of it, Joey Salads, who made a, a so-called 
um, social experiment by leaving a Trump supporter car in the middle of a black community, and he hired actors who he said weren't actors to trash the car, and then said, oh, a bunch of black, black people trashed a, a, a Trump supporter car, and, um, and the people discovered him for it because they had taken photos from a nearby building, and the, the actors were just waiting nearby. They didn't actually discover the car, they were just waiting for their, you know, for their green light. So... He actually talks about how it's not like this anymore. People are just blowing this out of proportion. It's not real. People are feeding off of this. It's it's people are capitalizing off of this. Uh, it really needs to be shut down in like the next 2 to 3 years. This is this is the new this is the new civil war that we have here. We're trying to fight against misinformation and and not freedom of speech, but abuse, the abuse of the freedom of speech. This is what people are doing. They're demonizing each other. They want war. They still want war. Like I said, hobby wars. People are having too much time on their hands. We need an asteroid to just unite all of us together. We need some sort of cataclysmic event that doesn't take lives, but just scares the bejesus out of us and gets us out of our homes and go exercising and stuff. We need we need something to, to, to really focus our minds back. So now I'm bringing back pigmentation around the lashes. Anywhere where we have a kind of lash or, or, or some kind of freckle or something, pigmentation is a, a non-local color. It's not the color of the texture, so it's not skin tone. It's just an extra darkness coming out of something. <clears throat> he also claimed to be kicked off a Delta plane because he spoke Arabic. Yeah, I saw that too. I mean, I thought it was a real joke until I heard what he's been doing, and sometimes it is a case of boy who cries wolf, but, you know, I grew up with punks like, like that one kid, and I, I grew up in an Arab community. They're all punks, you know. <laughs> I'm Arab, right? I get to say this. My brother's a punk. Both my brothers are punks. I don't believe a thing they say. Yo, what's the rack today? I beat up like 17 guys. I'm like, hey, shut up, dude. Just eat your rice. Shut up. Yo, what's the rack, uh... Yo, I, I, I went rock climbing and I just did amazing and I was like faster than the rest of them. Eh, shut up, sit down. So, I've been around Arabs too long. I don't believe their sensational ways of telling a story. If you're an Arab, you know what I mean. Like, they'll just blow it out of proportion. Oh, hitch slide be yo, hitch I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. I like when Issa talks about that and teaches how to don't suck at drawing at the same time. <laughs> I don't know, there's a lot of work to do, so I have to find a story to tell you guys. So I'm just bringing some general texture, getting rid of that weird halo just floating around. Just like that. And then if you wanted to, we can bring in the little wisps at a later time. But mostly, you just see under her hair, this is the front piece, and this is the back piece. That back piece needs to stay pitch black. She already has such dark hair, and it's blanketing over another section of the hair. So it's going to cause that like really pitch black frame around her face. So before, after. And that's how I do it. There's a lot more to do. So I took care of edge work and contrast. They're still shrinking my brush and going in. And I probably um, will just leave that for the final minutes. It's really just last minute work. But look at this. Sometimes you guys actually do that, that, that shrinking the brush and doing that stuff first. You, you guys do that first. Like first first like before anything like you go straight into it straight into the lashes straight into the outline this is Iraq where from the Middle East are you from I'm from Iraq <clears throat> isn't the contrast still a little bit too low on the on the on the whole piece I think so I think so because there's a lot of areas of washout so if we did something like this like that let's just take it all the way down put it on protect tones and just do a little thing like this A little bit more moisture just around the lips. The lips are probably have makeup on them. But now, once we do bring in this extra contrast, this is just editing. This is just you know editing off Photoshop. We're not touching the edges. The edges are supporting this kind of contrast. So what is it about contrast? What's the relationship between an edge and contrast? Does anyone know what it is? It's a very hard question. Don't think anyone will get it. It's not hard, but it's usual. What's the relationship between the visibility of edges and contrast? I'm going to give you a big clue there. If you're on YouTube, just type the answer and then comment. Don't, <laughs> don't think it's too late. 
It's an honor system. I'll believe you that you that you answered before I answered it. Oh, you're from Iran. Nice. I know some are like Persian words. I grew up with a lot of Persians. My favorite, my best friend, my favorite friend. <laughs> my best friend in in uh, in uh, middle school was Persian. Her name was Hedie. Planes are more visible with contrast. Mm, not what I'm looking for. Edges bring out difference in value. No. Depth. No. 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 Oops. Edges create structure. Contrast supports the light source. If contrast is higher, then the edges are stronger. If there's high contrast, the edge is more visible. How blended it is, sharpened. Now, why do we have high contrast, and why are the edges so visible? What are they an indication of? Really, really easy question. I'm just going at it backwards. So I can test you guys. With contrast, the edges are a lot more apparent. It's like you when you highlight. Yeah, you're getting there. I'm from Bosnia. Do you maybe know where it is? Bosnia? No, I, I, I'm not very geographically apt. <laughs> it's right. Talking about the LGBT version, they listed in the last one recently. <laughs> no, I haven't, Joshua. No. When we have high contrast, and we exactly, L got it. When we have high contrast, and we have high detail in the edge work, we have a strong light source. That's the light source causing all this. That's the culprit. It's not the kind of face she has, or or the um, or the, how light her skin is, or you know the whole thing about leaving edges or leaving uh, details last. It's just about the light source. So when we have sharp edges, that happens when we have high contrast, which happens in areas that the light has focused on directly. So this kind of edge. So if I did this, take a look at what happens. Let's say I completely did this. All right, so I'm just going to blend those very, very roughly. This is a shadowed area, right? It's got no light on it. What I did was I did exactly what I did before. I blocked in, and I gave it this super sharp edge. Does that feel right to you? It feels unusual. Even if it was the same value, it's unusually sharp. Look at the reference. There is an edge here, though. What happened? How about the nostril here? There's an edge here. What happened there? The light isn't there to feed the edge. The light isn't there to feed the contrast. So you only really have to bring in the detail, and which is edges and contrast, just around the areas where the light hits, so the focal point. You're not expected to do this anywhere else. You're not supposed to do this anywhere else. It was unusual to have that much detail. I mean, where's the light? Where's the light to provide that much detail to our eyes and have this consistent uh, source of light just constantly feeding our eyeballs and providing the resolution that we need? So this class was about how to add resolution, how to add more info, and blocking in and then er and blending only where you're supposed to, where you can afford some gradients, is the only way to do that. You can do it backwards if you had to correct. You know, whatever you painted, just start blocking in over it. Zoom back out and blend it out. Only blend out where you can blend. And leave everything else intact. But yo, I'm Arab, and if I was on a Delta airline plane and I heard these two guys and they were just talking Arabic really loud. I'm Arab, I'm Arab, I'm Muslim, I would be suspicious. I would just not stop watching them. I would watch them the whole ride. I don't care. I would watch them like a hawk. Slightest little trip. Oh, they're going to the bathroom? I'll just follow them. Like, hey, buddy, where are you going? Hey, buddy. <laughs> um, I, was just seeing, I was just seeing too much to, to, you know. I'm not saying I'm racist, but, but uh, again, we can't, we can't, we gotta, what's the term? If they're just being loud, it's like, why are you being loud, buddy? If you really didn't want any trouble, you know that we have a bad rap on us. Why are you being loud on a plane? You're just being an ob obnoxious asshole right now. Everyone's quiet before the plane is about to leave. Everyone's just sitting there, trying not to shit themselves, 
because it's a plane and it's just going to be in the sky for a really long time and I hope it doesn't fall down to the ground, all right? That's what everyone's worried about. Don't sit there talking Arabic really, really loud. Arabic is a very violent language. It's very harsh and you're just there yelling it. I would, I would just speak English. I'd be like, yo, I'd just start singing some like, some like Christmas songs just so they don't, you know, I, I don't get that kind of treatment because that, it's been, hap it happened before. Right after 9-11, my class, private school, was attacked in this, publicly we were on a trip and they saw a bunch of little girls with hijabs on and thought it was okay to throw stones at them and call them terrorists. That was my class. That was me when I was a kid. I know what it's like to be cornered like that. You just feel like you did something wrong and you really didn't do anything wrong. But these guys, if they really were in fault, they should not have been talking so loud. They should have just stayed out of the way and help us like just change this reputation that these Arabs have. Because really it hasn't been in our favor. These ISIS morons haven't really been helping. They're just sitting there, oh, yeah, okay, okay. It's like, shut up, shut up. You're in a plane filled with white people. You're going to get yourself in trouble. Why are you talking so loud unless you want... You know, extra views and extra revenue on your on your video. Anyway, those guys, I would never be friends with them. That's the kind of people like they are. They just want attention, and they cause this kind of trouble. They love the publicity. They love how this exploded, and that's why we should like not fall for it. <clears throat> I mean, if, if, if it wasn't, you know, if it was the case, if it was, like, if they didn't really didn't do that, you know, that's different. That just scares me. But, I mean, seeing jo Joey Salads, what he's been up to, and stuff like that, you kind of have to believe, yeah, it was just for the sake of YouTube money. They want to buy an Audi. Yeah. Maybe he was <laughs> praying the plane don't crash. <laughs> No, we play we pray very silently if that was the case. I don't know. Planes are the most scrutinized piece of machinery there is in the world. It's very unlikely they just fall like that. They don't just fall out of the sky. All right. All right. So just made the lips a little bit more equal before, after. So this is the direction you should be taking it in. Um, try to bring in the rest of this detail here. This has become a little bit more high contrast than that. But um, don't forget to block in. All right? I don't know what this piece is. Oh, okay. Um, you're starting off with some good values. I recommend you start replacing a lot of the lines. If this is the secondary light source, don't paint it now. Paint it after. Okay? Because if you start painting it now, it'll change how you paint the skin tone in the light situation. You're painting the secondary light source. All right, listen. If the main light source was green, you want to know what happens if the light source is colored? Do you guys want to know what happens if you stand under a blue light or a red light or a green light? You turn green, all right? You turn into a green person. Because that's what that light does. It's the only source of light. It doesn't allow any of the other uh, colors of the rainbow in there. Um, so what's going to happen? It's going to no, no, no other color other than green is going to show up. Um, so if this was the light source and it was green, this is what you should look like right now. But I think you're treating this light source, the secondary light source, as a primary. You're confusing it. In fact, your main light source should be white. And if you did have a secondary light source, it should be in the opposite direction of your primary light source. So it should be here right now. And if you had a secondary light source, if the light main light is coming in from the top, so it's white, get rid of that, it's a nice white light source. And then you have the secondary, secondary coming in this way doing this kind of business. All right, so only on the right side, just on the side like that. Okay, so what you did was a little bit wrong. You confused your primary. You said your primary was the actual color of the, you know, of this uh, light, primary light source is the color of the secondary, which is completely wrong. Yeah, you painted beige skin types this this the skin tone is only visible under a bright white yellowish light. All right, so there's that. 
Um, that's it for today. Thank you all for coming. If you guys liked what you saw, if you want a copy of Portrait Studio, it's available on my store at isrec.com. Um, what's coming for Portrait Studio? Um, there will be a mesh uh, symmetry line. I think we, we have that now. Um, there is going to be possibly, possibly uh, some more models that I might work on and upload. Um, I just have to make sure that I, you know, they're they're ex like they're they're good quality. They're not going to mess up with the with the light sources and stuff. Um, it's possible that we might bring in a better lighting system than this one. This one's far superior than version one of Portrait Studio, um, but I might be um, just investing in a better lighting situation. Um, we might update the models later in the year. Um, and also provide a, uh, a full body rig, um, so you can posable body. But until then, um, Porsche Studio is definitely very, very useful for just really perfecting your ability to block in and look at how these lights happen. You have control over the light source, the model, the camera. You have full control as if it's a you know a studio with a model in it that you can use to reference your work or just guide your guide your way around. Um, uh, a photo reference or, or just a Jeff for general study and it's also a great teaching tool for me uh, but if you wanted it it's available in the store uh, my brush sets are available there if you guys wanted some blocking in brushes I definitely have some of those um, made and ready um, for the community so if you guys wanted to post your application for the 2016 2017 my transformation grant I have extended the deadline to the end of January so by 15th of January I really haven't seen enough of these so I really want to see some more, and um, we'll be choosing the, the, the rewards soon. This is beautiful. Um, we'll be choosing the, the, the winners soon. It might be two winners, it might be one winner, depending on the budget uh, for the rewards. And um, if you wanted to apply and you feel like you've run out of time to put one together, you still have until the 31st of January. I just feel like we should have more time um, since there were the holidays were in the way and then people just doing studies and all kinds of stuff and it gives you more time to show off how much you've improved uh, but the, 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 the rewards are posted um, in the all posts wall right here right here if you guys want to read out what's expected of you what the rewards will be um, not rewards but the scholarship will will contain and I'll be posting a poll very soon on what the next theme is. So what would you guys like for the next theme? So the theme will be based on what you guys choose now. The poll, sorry, will be based on what you guys choose now. And then I'll boil those options down and then we will have a, a vote. And then we will do the challenge. Get it? Just like we did it before last year uh, in the summer. So, um, so yeah, what would you guys like to see? Right, I think that I would love to see some more creature design. That's something I'm adding in there. Um, I wanted to see some more character design, but I don't know what to do it. So I don't want to just general character design. I wanted to choose like boy, we chose villain. I want to choose like the you know the hero or something like that. <clears throat> Furry, get out of here. Frankie really likes his mohawks. Queen theme. Oh, really interesting. Queen, very nice, very nice choice. What the fuck did I just do? Queen. All right, what else? Max, Eesh. enchanted objects. Oh, very nice, very very nice. Oh, I like that one. That's going to be a little, you know, a little difficult because it's basically a still life. You have to just draw the object. By the way, those who are leaving now, um, thank you so much for coming today. I will talk to you guys on next class. For those who are staying, help me choose one. <laughs> Mentals. Uh, how about um, medieval thingy? <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Marco, you're probably the most... <laughs> okay, Magic Companion. Ooh, very nice. So that goes under character design, I mean creature design. Magic Companion. Oh, I'm going to have fun writing around that, if it wins. I'm not sure. I feel like I've tilted all the polls. Like, I've actually affected, like, a really bad politician just, like, affected you guys in the wrong ways, and I've won every single one I've wanted. But maybe you guys like me, so you want to, you want me to have the theme that I want, but... Um, more landscapes. Shit. Oh, where the fuck did that go? Alright. Um, landscapes. I'm talking too much. I'm missing some of these. Um, anti-hero, is that a thing? Uh, yeah. Sidekick. Birds, dragons. Mm, I think I'll just gonna I'm gonna allow if, if you know the kind of animal to be the subcategory if if magic companion does win which is really cool 
if it did win. Punk sounds fun. Dragons mixed with humans? Hmm. Witches. Ooh, I love witches. Mmm. Alright, witches. Dirty nasty witches. Uh, villain, villain. We already did villain. Costume design. Um, so that's involved in character design, by the way. That's a subcategory of character design. Um, demons. Probably shouldn't use this kind of tally or whatever. Metals, dragons, birds, sidekick, um, landscapes, futuristic, uh, futuristic landscape, okay. Futuristic, poison food, chimeras, ooh. All right, how do we vote? Had to mute stream. I will, I will let you know, don't worry, I'll let you know about where to vote and how to vote. Um, ancient Egypt would be interesting. Ooh, okay, so ancient Egypt as a theme for any category. Uh, Befians, half human, half animal, feminists. <laughs> those, those, those creatures are, are really very scary. I mean, I don't know if it's safe for the younger viewers to design feminists. We're talking long tails, fangs. At least the modern feminist. Ghosts. Ooh. I'm gonna put that under creature design. Ghost. Flower people. <laughs> actually, that's really nice. It actually opens up a lot of room for study. You know, researching different kinds of flowers. Hey, that might win. Flower people. Very nice. Very nice. It reminds me of uh, Silvari from. Uh, from uh, from uh, Guild Wars. Um, <laughs> yes, feminists. <laughs> See, no, no, I'm not going to write that. <laughs> Closet racists. Ooh, now we're talking horns and... Yeah, we're talking all kinds of stuff. Um, Medusa. Yeah, like a Medusa witch. Ooh, ooh. Zombie elves. Oh, that's really nice. Zombie elf. Okay, okay. Risen elf. Zombie elf. I need to play Guild Wars again. So much fun. Possessed vegetables. <laughs> that's actually really fun. That's actually really fun. That would actually be a really, really fun, like, um, a very colorful idea. Now, I'm serious here. I I I'm ready for some ideas. Elements, element characters like fire, ice, wind, eh, seems a bit generic. I mean, it's a nice idea, but it's very generic. Oh, medieval thingy, can I suggest knights? Um, <laughs> Alright, let me just put that here. Knights and character design. See how big character design is? It covers all kinds of, of units of design, so it, you really have to get into your character design, people. Meninists. <laughs> Monsters under the bed. Ooh, that's really cute. That would actually be really fun. Monsters. What monster would you find under the bed? So you're basically sleeping. You wake up at 3 a.m. You're 12 years old. You look under your bed and holy shit, what do you see? Draw what you see. Kind of deal. Yeah, that seems like a really, really cool idea. Anything with lasers. <laughs> I know these people are so creative, right, Rosal? I'm just like beside myself here. Pepe the Frog, Gods of Athena. But how do we twist that? So I've always wanted to explore the Gods of Olympus, but how do we make a twist on it? If there were vegetables? <laughs> There's that, like if the if Gods of Olympus, if there were vegetables. The Gods of Olympus, if there were cutlery. You know, some really random shit you find in your kitchen. Keisha, no, we already did villains. New Year Me, dry yourself transforming into something else. Feminists under the bed. Now that's scary. <laughs> How about boyfriends under the bed? Oh my god. Modern gods. Yeah, I just see people drawing jeans. I don't want jeans. Everyone knows what a jean looks like. We need to have more imagination to be able to draw a tunic or something. It just takes more imagination and stamina. Harambe. <laughs> uh, what's with vegetables? I don't know. They're very funny. 
Zombie steampunk vegetable ghost to the That's perfect right there. Alright. Gods of Olympus, but robots. Ooh. So that would be the mecha thing. But not really, because that's just like a... Yeah, mechs are different. People plus landscapes, like a person forming a hill or a lady with a dress that represents the galaxy. Hmm, okay. Like they did with uh, with Moena. Uh, zombie gods. Ooh, zombie gods. That reminds me of like Norse mythology or something. These are great. These are wonderful. I'm just going to save these indefinitely for the rest of the year. My Little Ponies. Gods of Olympus as cats. That's interesting. That's a fun texture study for fur and stuff. <clears throat> now I have to just put these on the side because we have enough up here. Gods of Olympic as mythical animals, cats, or mythical animals. Now I'm taking notes from you guys. Alright, these are going to be hella fun. Um, Gods of Olympus, but as Mohawks? <laughs> Modern Harambe in jeans, a scarf, and a Starbucks cup. <laughs> A crazy cucumber ladies. I drew zombie ballerinas today. Thieves, dinosaurs. Um, drawing other races would probably be challenging for most of the community. Elves, companion creatures based on planets in the solar system. Oh, interesting. Alright. Sweet little baby. Sweet little baby. <laughs> sweet little alien baby Jesus. Now, now. Don't offend anybody. You get your dick chopped off. Uh, Cyclops. Pirates. Alright. No, no, Sporrel. Not as furries, no. If Disney princess princes and princesses looked realistic. Too many people have tried that already. How about gods as kids? Oh, very nice. Olympic gods as kids. All right, that's enough. That's a lot, right? I mean, I'm so, like, curious. You know, wooden flutes to satisfy that one guy from that one stream. <laughs> oh, yeah, with the wooden flute. I don't know if I should make people draw injuries and blood and gore like that. Centaurs. I like the planet idea. Yeah, me too. So it might be a fight between monsters under the bed, character design, um, flower creature, flower people, uh, enchanted objects, um, and uh, uh, creature animal as a planets of the solar system, and then gods of Olympus as children. It might be those. And then if, they, if one of them doesn't win, I'll bring it back into the next poll and put a, put a new piece in there. They're probably going to be like five pieces, pieces each poll. There better be lots of votes because this community is getting bigger. So if you guys don't vote, I don't do this, okay? If we don't get at least 100 votes, I'm not running this, this, this uh, challenge. Usually what people win with these challenges is like my brushes or something or my books or like a, if, if I really just feel very generous, probably an hour with me. You know, to do whatever you want. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> oh, I guess I have to run with that. Sorry. Uh, for a critique hour, you know, just lessons and portfolio reviews and whatnot. <laughs> yes, you can only vote once. Um, and you just vote with your, you know, on Google+. Plus. It'll be on the community and I'll run, run the poll there. Yeah, Monsters Under the Bed is really cool. You can find, like, really cute animals. Really cute. Uh, like, you know how children see animals and see creatures the way they see themselves, really short, cute things. So I'll probably have it like a G-rated kind of monsters under the bed design. Yeah, the, the poll will be on the community, so if you don't know where to find the community, go to my website and click this little G+. Right click, open in tab, or actually I do have it open to new tab, um, and it'll, the poll will be right here. Alright, I will probably do this. I will run the poll soon, and then announce the challenge as officially started after the transformation grant winners have been announced. 
Were there winners from the last challenge? Or are the winners considered the ones picked for the stream? Um, the last challenge had note taker winners. So people who took good notes, I sent them a message, and then if they responded on time before the other guys did, I usually just have them race. <laughs> I give them a bunch of stuff. Where to vote? The vote will be on the community. You'll see it here. Yeah, you can do whatever you want in that hour. The community link is right there. Just to double check, this is just digital art, right? No, you can do this, like you can do the sketches in, in traditional or... Uh, I wish I could just give you all tablets. I hate this. I wish like everyone who doesn't have a tablet could just magically get one. I'm so sorry if you guys don't have tablets and you're just forced to not, you know, join these challenges and enjoy like Photoshop and stuff. I mean, I, if you can color it with pencils and you have a nice little clean setup and you take a good picture of it or scan it, I would definitely consider it um, for, for the final showcase. And I usually show everyone's, I try to show everyone's submission. It's not a contest, it's a challenge, and at the end we all do, we do a video and I just do a quick critique on some of the basics of the character or creature design and which ways to improve it, presentation, technical um, application and all of that. So it's nearly 7. I have to get going. Thank you all for joining today. You guys are amazing. You guys are just the best. Um, you, you, you provide more support than you think you do. Just by you being here, it means a lot. <clears throat> and I'm sorry about my rant today. I just feel like I have to make sure that I'm not muted or, or feel like I've backed down in any way. I feel like we should, even either just with this tiny little step, try to change the landscape of today's society so that our children will not be... Um, you know, living in a dystopic version of the future. Anyway, it got dark really fast. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.